All right, guys, I'm back, and we're going to be checking out this LTD Phoenix 1000 Deluxe. This one has the Fishman Fluence Modern Pickups, the Everton Bridge. I'm running it straight into the Britton SLO into the Splon 412 with an MD 421 and a 57 on a Scumback H75. And this is what it does. It's rowdy. <laughs> Now this is with the passive mode engaged or the alternate mode, I don't really know what it is. A little bit more gain. I really like this mode a little bit better. It fills out the bottom end and the lower mids in a way that gives it a little bit more oomph to the sound. And I really don't mind. It drops off the high end sparkle just a little bit, but I don't really mind that because it's already got a lot of that anyways. Um, we'll flip back and forth here. This is the passive mode. So I think if you're if you're wanting the tightest, cleanest sound, then yeah, the full-on active mode, you know, that's the way to go. Uh, but if you're not after like, if you, if you want something a little bit smoother, a little bit fatter and rounder, then I think that pulling this uh, tone pot out and going with the passive setting, uh, in my opinion, I like that a whole lot better. So uh, let's see, where do we start with this thing? This was definitely one of those gear curiosities that I talked about uh, way back uh, several videos ago, um, where just things that I ordinarily wouldn't think I would like, but I really want to find out what is it like. Uh, this is one of those things. Um, so uh, definitely, uh, definitely, am not a fan of the Evertune bridge. This is the first guitar with the Evertune that I've tried out. And the reason why is because a lot of my playing and phrasing relies on little nuanced bends and uh, little movements. And the way that I've got it set up right now is the top str uh, three strings are Evertuned with the system engaged, but the bottom three strings are in setting mode three where you can bend it up a little bit like but I'll if you go to this one well there's still a little bit of you can get a little bit of vibrato even with the Everton system working you can get a little bit of vibrato there and I think that's kind of the that was realistically the only reason why this thing worked for me on stage was because I could force a little bit of vibrato out of the notes that I had the Evertune uh, system engaged on. But other than that, the, the biggest gripe is that I like to be able to have a little bit more expressiveness with my playing and the vibrato and the Evertune system effectively defeats that for the most part. And I, I get the strengths of the system. Like when you're playing and you want notes to not go out of tune, if you want to be fretting harder on these notes 
and not go a little bit sharp, the Evertune fixes that. It's really awesome the way that it does that. So I 100% can understand why the players who absolutely swear by Evertune and are getting all of their guitars converted over to Evertune systems, I 100% understand why they are thinking that way because it does exactly what uh, the system and the engineers say that it can do. But it is something that I do not want my guitar to do. I'm totally okay with notes going a little bit sharp and having to tune up you know, a couple of times during the show. Um, I'm totally fine with that if it means I have a little bit more expressiveness and also the ability to quickly make tuning alterations, uh, little tweaks on stage because even though this system allows for going from E to drop D and vice versa, there's a little trick that you have to go along with that uh, I actually saw in Oli England's video where he talked about the easy, the easy way to go from E to D is to actually set the Evertune mode in uh, drop D and then tune up to an E rather than have it tuned to E and then try to drop because it takes a lot longer to get it tuned just right when you're going down, but when you're tightening it up, it's way, way faster. And I did try it both ways and 100% agree that's, that's the way to do it, uh, is to have it to where Drive channel. I was used to having a bend right there, and instead I just got this little baby vibrato. So, so that those little those little nuances and uh, the little vibratos that I throw in there, like I missed having some of that on stage. Um, so, I think the Evertune is really cool, but it just does not fit with my style of playing, and that's kind of where I'm going to leave it. I think that it works really well. It does exactly what the Evertune people say that it does, but I don't want my guitar doing that. So, so for that reason, me and this guitar, we butted heads a little bit on stage and it lasted two of our three sets. And then I was back over to the Schecter. Uh, the, old, the, the familiarity of the way the guitar reacted was a welcome change. The other uh, kind of big thing that I just don't dig with this guitar is how far over the neck is with this weird body shape. I'm not used to the end of the fretboard being right here. I'm used to like 12, 13 fret being right here, but instead it shifted down. Now what that meant was when we're on stage, getting way out here, it sort of fatigues the shoulders, if I'm being honest, because not only are you having to reach out further to fret way down here, you're also having to support the guitar itself because it wants to do this. It wants to neck dive on you. And admittedly, I do have a slightly grippy leather strap on right now, but the, uh, the, padded, strap, the padded strap that I have has that nylon surface and it's way slipperier than this leather is. So the whole night it was wanting to just fall down like this. And for me, having to not only support the guitar's weight by holding it up, but also reaching out further like that, it did start to fatigue my shoulders a little bit and I wasn't really a fan of that. So just, I think that it might could have been something I could get used to if I played more and more, but 
none of my other guitars do that to my shoulder and I feel like they're just way easier to play. Um, so again, didn't really dig having to cope with a neck that's shoved way further this way. Uh, things that I do like though, uh, the thing looks awesome. I love the silver burst finish on there. I kind of wish it were a glossy finish, to be honest. Uh, I do like the fact that the neck has a satin finish on there, but I wish it was a glossy finish because it, it, I think it would feel a little bit more premium of an instrument if it had a glossy finish. But yeah, really digging the silver burst. The neck was nice and straight. I uh, checked it with my little Stumac fret uh, straight edge and there's just like a sliver of relief um, in the neck which is kind of how I prefer it. I don't like it to be 100% flat. I just prefer just a tad bit of relief in there. Uh, all the frets perfectly leveled and you know, such a great setup guitar which coming from their Korean factory just like my Schecter uh, wouldn't expect anything less and yeah it's a it's a good playing instrument if you don't mind you know going way down here it plays really well it's set up well the action is not is nice and low the evertune system was not really too bad to set up in terms of getting the action and intonation set right the intonation was spot on but the action uh, i lowered it just a little bit and again there were no problems with that the evertune system made that easy uh, what I do wish the Evertune system had is fine tuners down here. Now, I don't know what the feasibility of getting them physically um, in that space. I don't know what the feasibility of that might be, but having to rely on an Allen key to make fine tuning adjustments, uh, it, it gave me a little bit of anxiety on stage. Even though I had the key uh, sitting on top of the amp, I used the Badlander for the show with this guitar. Um, even though I had that tuning key with me on stage, the fact that you have to use that to get your fine tuning adjustments in, I wasn't really a fan of that. Because, you know, with the Floyd Rose, yeah, you're locked in, but you've got these little fine tuners that you can use to quickly make adjustments if you need to. And if you run out of fine tuning adjustments, you've got products like the Tone Vice locking, the keyless locking nut that makes it really fast to just flip a switch, kind of make your adjustments here, flip it back down, and you're ready to go. So pray that it stays in tune on stage. Thankfully mine did, and that's part of their advertising is that it just never goes out of tune once the strings are stretched. Um, I don't feel like that's 100% accurate. I did have the slight tuning adjustments that I had to make, and that was after an entire day of playing it here at the studio. So not 100% accuracy on that, but close enough that I probably could have gotten by, but I wanted it to be locked in perfect tuning. So I did have to make some fine tuning adjustments there. Speaking of that, when you're making fine tuning adjustments with the Allen key, the bridge is sort of like flopping all over the place and turns just like going up and down on the spring. So the tuner is sitting there just kind of doing this business while you're sitting there tuning it. So you have to tune it, like kind of like let go of it to see where it settles and then make your you know adjustments again and again until it stays where you want it to be so little minor annoyances that again i just was not used to because none of my other guitars do that i lock my floyd roses down so that they're dive only and just i don't have any any of those problems with it so um so yeah this guitar it was honestly it was it was a miss for me um i didn't really feel it on stage didn't, don't really feel it in the studio i don't really think that i like the uh, the Fluence Modern pickups, the Fluence, uh, the Classics, maybe I might like those a little bit more. I think they have a ton of output and a ton of gain, but honestly, I don't think that they hit or punch any harder than any of my other guitars with passive pickups. And having to set it to the passive mode on these to get that richness and fullness in the low end and the lower mids, um, it again, it kind of defeated the whole purpose of the pickups themselves. And I think that just a, a good set of passive high output pickups would have suited my taste a lot better than the Fluences. But again, the sound that they deliver, I completely understand why the guys who like them pick those pickups. They just weren't, they didn't work for me. They don't work for the style of music that I play. And when I do want to get really heavy, 
I think that there are better options out there for me personally, so yeah. But anyways, it's a really cool instrument and I'm glad that ESP make different versions of this guitar, some without the Evertune system, some with passive pickups. I think that something with like a stop piece uh, bridge and a nice set of hot passive pickups, I think that would have been a much better experience sound wise. Um, Playability wise though, I don't, mm, it, it just wouldn't have worked even if it did have the everything right on this side of the guitar. It still got all this going wrong on this side of the guitar for me. So for that reason, uh, I just didn't really dig my time with it. But if you wanna take a look at this thing and try it out, then I will have an affiliate link in the video description and again, big thanks to the guys at Zounds for sending me this to try out and to satiate that gear curiosity of what in the world is this weird but cool looking guitar? What is it like to play? And now I know. And I've uh, given you guys my thoughts on that. And if you think that this is something that you'll dig, man, go check one out. I think that there's, there's a right player for this guitar, but that right player um, just isn't me. So, so yeah, uh, thanks for checking out this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.